Space is an astounding thing. Unimaginable distances, gigantic quasars, amazing black holes that defy the very foundations of physics. But even when we look into this mysterious and brilliant tapestry of stars, we still can't help but feel not only admiration, but also hope. Hope to find an Earth-like world. And the recent discoveries give us such hope. Thousands of exoplanets have already been discovered, and scientists are finding more and more worlds that they cautiously call second Earths. Today, we'll take a trip to several of these worlds. The Second Earth. Our first destination will be the planet that has become a symbolic starting point in the deliberate and successful search for Earth-like exoplanets. Discovering Kepler-22b was a historic event, to say the least. For the first time, mankind discovered a distant world that, based on a number of signs, could sustain life. The world media exploded with loud headlines about the discovery of a second Earth. But what exactly was this amazing discovery? The planet Kepler-22b was discovered by the Kepler telescope using the transit method. This is one of the most accessible methods for detecting exoplanets known to modern science. The principle lies in identifying regular drops in the observed brightness of a star when the planet passes along the star's hypothetical disk. This drop in brightness can be due to a number of reasons. So it took the telescope at least three dimming events at regular intervals to confirm that the planet exists. Finally, it was proved, and the research team announced the discovery of the exoplanet on December 5, 2011. The transit method, along with the data on the star Kepler-22 itself, gave enough information to gain a general idea as to what this mysterious world looks like. The star system is 620 light years away. The star is very similar to our sun, only is a little younger, 3% smaller, 2% less massive, and fainter in luminosity. At about 127.5 million kilometers, the planet Kepler-22b is closer by 15% to its parent star than our Earth is to the Sun. Thus, it finds itself in the so-called Goldilocks zone, or livable zone. This is the region of space that lies at the optimal distance from the star, where a planet can have liquid water. The latter condition is crucial in order for life to emerge. Of course, being in the livable zone is necessary, but it's not enough. Other factors also influence whether a planet is suitable for the emergence and maintenance of life, or at least hypothetical colonization. We currently have very little data on this. The planet's radius is about 2.4 times that of the Earth. As for the mass, there are only very rough estimates. According to some calculations, it weighs less than 36 Earth masses. According to others, less than 124. The chemical composition of the planet is virtually unknown since the Kepler telescope doesn't have the appropriate equipment and we can only speculate about the composition of the atmosphere based on indirect evidence. This evidence allows us to assign the planet to the class of mini-Neptunes planets that combine features of gas giants and rocky terrestrial planets. Natalie Battaglia, one of the researchers working on the Kepler Space Telescope project, looks on the bright side of Kepler-22b. She suggests that the planet can be mostly made of ocean, with all conditions needed for life to emerge. Some models suggest a lateral rotation of the planet, with each pole facing the sun for half of its 290-day orbital period. This could further contribute to a mild climate, as stellar energy would level out over time. Summing up all the available data, it can be argued that Kepler-22b can hypothetically really turn out to be an ocean planet with a comfortable temperature and all the conditions needed to sustain organic life. But in any case, this world would be hostile for a human 
at the very least because of a powerful gravity. Nonetheless, Kepler-22b will continue to excite the minds of many space enthusiasts. Another discovery of the Kepler Space Observatory that stole the spotlight in the scientific community is the exoplanet Kepler-438b. It was discovered near a red dwarf in the Lyra constellation using the same transit method on January 6, 2015. The star system is almost 473 light years away. What makes this planet unique is that unlike Kepler-22b, it's much more Earth-like. What's more, it's almost identical to Earth, according to some sources. Its radius is about 1.12 of that of the Earth. The axis tilt is almost 90 degrees. The orbital period, on the other hand, is significantly different, as it takes only 35 days for the planet to make a complete revolution around its star. The mass is unknown for the same reason that we know little about the mass of Kepler-22b. However, there is some indirect evidence signifying the presence of a surface and its rocky texture. But one of the most important parameters of the planet is being located within the so-called livable zone. The parent star is half the size of our sun, half as massive, and much less luminous. But Kepler-438b is much closer to the star, which is suggested by a short orbital period which is 10 times shorter than on Earth. The relationship between star luminosity and distance indicates that the planet receives just enough energy to potentially hold liquid water. Researchers were very excited about these facts and assigned this planet a high Earth similarity index of 0.88 according to the ESI classification. However, one needs to understand that rocky planets get a fairly high ESI index by default, regardless of their location relative to the Goldilocks zone. For example, Mars has an index of 0.70, and Mercury, which is completely unsuitable for life, has an index of 0.60. On the other hand, Kepler-438b has the same high index of 0.88, according to the SPH classification, Standard Primary Habitability, while Mars is frustratingly hopeless in this regard with an index of zero. The SPH index is a climatological measure of a planet's habitability based on the predicted or hypothetical data on the atmosphere temperature and humidity. Indeed, with such parameters, it could well be that long sought after Earth twin that all the ardent space romantics dream about. By the way, contrary to popular belief, the color of the sun on such a planet wouldn't appear red at all, despite the fact that the star is classified as a red dwarf. This name is very arbitrary, and for the naked eye, the local sun would appear only slightly yellower than the sun we see here. However, further research and analysis of the data obtained by the Kepler Observatory led scientists to doubt the far-reaching conclusions about the planet's habitability. Astrophysicist David Armstrong and his colleagues from the University of Warwick in the UK found that Kepler-438b is regularly exposed to powerful radiation flows capable of depriving the planet of the atmosphere and creating dismal conditions for any living organisms. The fact is that its native star is very generous with power flares, which are much more intense than the strongest solar flares. But it's not the flares that directly affect the atmosphere, but the coronal mass ejections. These are massive ejections of gas and electromagnetic radiation from the stellar corona that significantly disturb the star's magnetic field. Armstrong believes that if Kepler-438b has the same magnetic field as Earth, it could be partially protected from the star's damaging activity. This would considerably increase the planet's chances of becoming a cradle for new life, but such data isn't within reach of modern science just yet.
all the promising characteristics of exoplanets Kepler-22b and Kepler-438b aside, the distance of hundreds of light years is quite unsettling. Therefore, the discovery of planet Gliese 832c was a milestone event, as we are only 16 light years away from its native star. By space standards, this is very close. To put this into perspective, Alpha Centauri, the closest star system to Earth, is only 4 light years away. Gliese 832c was discovered in 2014 by an international team of astronomers led by Robert A. Wittenmeyer. Knowing all the critical data, the research team made the bold assumption that Gliese 832c was the next best candidate for a habitable world at the time. Indeed, the planet's parameters turned out to be quite encouraging. Not only is it in the habitable zone, but it's calculated that the amount of energy it receives from its star is roughly equivalent to what Earth receives from the Sun. The host star is a rather dim red dwarf, but the planet orbits at a close range, taking just 36 days to complete its orbiting period. Thanks to more advanced observation methods, it was possible to establish its more or less accurate mass, which turned out to be quite impressive about 5.4 Earth masses. The average temperature is estimated to be around 253 kelvins, or minus 20 degrees Celsius. This is just an average and very approximate estimate. Due to the orbit's significant eccentricity, the planet's temperature may fluctuate rather dramatically. Of course, despite the favorable location, we aren't still certain as for Gliese 832's habitability. Skeptics point out that the planet might have a very dense atmosphere because of high gravity, and this creates the conditions for a powerful greenhouse effect, similar to the one we observe on Venus with all the effects that render the planet unlivable. With this being said, the Venusian scenario is by no means a sentence, but merely an assumption. Another hypothesis postulates that the planet may well have a much more friendly atmosphere. But there can be another problem. There is a high chance the planet is tidally locked, meaning that one hemisphere is hot as it's constantly turned to the star, and the opposite side is shrouded in eternal darkness. But even in this case, the planet likely has a life strip between these two opposite extremes, an area where the average temperature is constantly around zero degrees Celsius may well pass along the twilight zone. And if the planet has a moderately dense atmosphere, this livable zone most probably extends to the dark side much further than the Terminator. The stable position of the tidal lock in its turn would certainly have another interesting effect. An invariable temperature difference between the dark and light side of the planet would form constant flows of atmospheric circulation. This is similar to planetary scale currents in the Earth's oceans. For example, the Gulf Stream determines a relatively temperate climate in the northern latitudes of the Earth. If it wasn't for the Gulf Stream, the British Isles would not be the foggy Albion they are now, but a cold desert, mostly covered with ice like Greenland. Similarly, constant air exchange could significantly expand the habitable zone on the planet Gliese 832c. Exoplanets in the habitable zone are an endless source of inspiration in the search for knowledge. And we surely hope that in the nearest future, this field of knowledge will be studied not only for astronomers, but also for xenobiologists.